Hey guys, my name is James. I'm on Instagram at James underscore films. And I'm going to be showing you today how to make this out of this. Hello guys, and welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. To get started with this tutorial, I'm just going to drag in uh, our image here, which is an image royalty free from Unsplash. It's specifically from the photographer Daniel Leon. So to start off with this tutorial, I'm going to unlock this background layer and actually rename it to our top layer. And I'm going to hit uh, Control J to duplicate it and rename this one to our reflected layer. So one of the next steps here is I'm actually going to crop our frame size here to be about twice the size of the image itself. So that looks about good. Let me fit this to the screen just to see what that looks like. So both our images are currently in the same exact orientation, but we're going to take our top layer, hit Control T, right click, and then you can actually flip it vertical. So this is going to be our reflected layer, so let's drag this down to just above the top layer here. So you can see if I have this down too far, you can still see the transparency. So I'm going to get rid of that and bring it up just a bit more. And then once I'm satisfied, I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm just going to recrop our image size here. So with this reflected layer, I'm actually going to convert it to a smart object first. And what that allows us to do is go back in later and change any of the effects that we're about to add without harming the initial image and having to re-import it. So go to Filter, Blur, and then Motion Blur. And this is the blur that usually gives you the best kind of water ripple, water reflect effect here. So this distance tells you how extreme your blur effect is going to be. So if you go really insane with it, you can see just the image is unusable and really doesn't look like much of anything. So a safe thing to use, I'd recommend somewhere between, let's say, about 60 and maybe 90 at the max. So I'm going to put mine at around 78 here, which gives me a nice smooth blur effect. Hit OK. So that's looking pretty good to start. So the next step here is actually adding in that boat that you saw in the image. So I'm going to drag in this image, which is another one that's royalty free from Unsplash. And I'm going to rasterize the layer first because we're going to be making some changes here. And I'm going to actually add in this first here, which is a, it creates a, a mask, a layer mask on this. And in this step right here, I'm going to show you several different techniques I use to cut out objects. One of the features that comes along with this magic wand, which is the quick selection tool. This is a fantastic tool if the layer is pretty much one color, which this boat basically is. So you'll just drag along here and select the majority of this layer. So I have this basically all selected here. I'm going to have to refine this obviously in a second, but I'm going to go up to select and then inverse, and this is going to select the background layer around the boat. And I can just go once again with my brush tool and then just take out all that layer. And then deselect it to show you our handiwork here. So we're pretty close in already here. You can still see there's some water here, here that needs to be refined, but we're getting closer to cutting this little boat out. This one's a bit of a, a tricky one since the color of the boat is somewhat similar at certain edges to the water around it. So another fantastic tool uh, to use in this situation is actually the pen tool. And essentially what you are going to do with this is click along your layer, adding points and to essentially select it, different points. So let me also show you how this pen tool works. You can just zoom in to your image and get really close in with it to, to snap very close to the edges. And you have these little dots on either side of each of the points that you select. And what you can do with that is once you click, you can just drag your mouse around. You can see it adds a bit of a bend to the path of the pen tool. And once you have this selected, say, you click on another thing, it actually continues this bend effect, and I don't want that. So what it can actually do is hit Control, and then get rid of that one dot right there. And then click again. You can see it's a nice, smooth, uh, straight line path so that no more curve to it. So once again, just to show you that curve, and then hit control and drag that back in to, to get rid of that curve again. And it allows you once again to just click straight along in a straight line path. Okay, so once you've selected your layer here, you can go and hit selection and then okay. So now this is selected. Once again, I, I want to get rid of the surrounding edges and not um, the boat itself. So I'm going to go to select and inverse 
once again grab our brush tool here and on the layer mask just go around and delete uh, erase everything around it and deselect you can see that boat is basically cut out there it's looking pretty good but you can still see there's a bit of blue around this guy's hair and in between here a little bit there that would be good to get rid of uh, which still shows signs of this being from a different image altogether so usually in this case I zoom into pixel level here so you can see the actual individual pixels turn the hardness of my brush up a decent bit maybe around 50 to 60 percent and then get the size of the brush actually to be really small and now you can go in and just kind of brush away some of those bluish pixels okay so this should be pretty good so let me once again zoom out to fit screen here so our boat is basically in there however it definitely does not look like it's a part of the scene so some changes definitely need to be made to blend this a bit better and one of the ones I usually start with is actually clicking onto here and adding a brightness and contrast layer above and snapping it only to that boat layer. So I can see that the background's a bit darker here and this boat is a bit too light for it. So I'm going to first drag down the brightness a bit here to add a little bit more blend to it. And then I'm going to decrease the contrast a bit here. I actually kind of give it a bit of a, that washed out faded look like the background has a bit. What I'm going to do is select both this layer and the brightness and contrast layer. And then once again, hit control J. Let me rename both of these just to keep track of them. So this is going to be our boat reflected layer. And then this is our uh, just normal boat layer. With the boat reflected layer, we're going to follow a similar approach to what we did when reflecting the mountains. We're once again hit, going to hit control T and then flip vertical on this layer. And then drag the boat down in a straight line to right below where that other boat was. Let's zoom in and get this one refined because this is a bit smaller and we want this to be pretty precise. So once again, control T, and you can use your hour keys to get in nice and precise on this. That's pretty decent. So once again, I'm going to make this actually a smart object, just in case I don't really like the blur that I add to this. And I want to add in once again that motion blur. But this one, we don't need nearly as much because this kind of looks a bit extreme and that boat reflection doesn't need to be as crazy. So we'll zoom this one down to let's say around in the somewhere in the 30s. Around 36 or 38 is a pretty safe one usually. And this usually brings out a couple issues with it. You can see there's this slight greenish slice right there in between the boat. So essentially what I just need to do is move up the boat a couple pixels. Still maybe a bit more to that just to make sure it blends well. So that's looking pretty good. So this is already a pretty decent scene, but it's a bit bland in terms of the sky aspect here. So what I want to actually do is make a new layer. I'm going to call this the moon layer. So I actually use quite a few brushes that are custom online, and I can link to all of these in the description of this video, just so you guys can have access to them. And these are pretty easy to install, and there's quite a few different ones, ranging from clouds to lens flares, even lighthouses, fog, mist, grass, trees, whatnot. There's quite a few brushes out there. A simple Google search will allow you to access a lot of these for free. To install a brush, you're going to click on this little cog right here, and then go down to Load Brushes. In Load Brushes, this allows you to actually select your what's called an ABR file. It's a brush file specifically for Photoshop. And you just hit Load. Since I already have these ones loaded, I won't do this, but you just hit Load. And then the next time you open your brushes, you can actually see them all show up in here. So those dust ones, for example, are, are all down here. And you can just select a brush. So for example, for this one, I want a moon. I'm just going to select on my moon. And then just click it onto the image. So. As of right now, that moon does not look like it belongs there for a number of reasons, one of which it's not reflected in here, but we can get to that in a second. I'm going to focus primarily on blending this moon into this image itself. I'm going to go about doing that by adding a couple new brushes to this as well. So I'm going to drag a layer down below the moon and call it the moon highlights layer. And that's going to allow us to blend it a bit better to you see this kind of brightness area behind the mountains. So I'm just going to take a typical brush drop the hardness all the way down to 0% and increase its size a bit, let's say to around 500. And I'm just going to drag around, adding a bit of lightness to the area around the mountains. Let's do this on either side, and then kind of linking up to around the moon itself. So right now this looks pretty insane, <laughs> not very good. But let's hit blend to screen and actually drop the opacity down to pretty low. Up it just a bit more. So let's say maybe around 14%. And 
I'm going to go into my erase tool and actually just get rid of some of the ones that fall a bit onto the mountains. Just to add a bit more color to those mountains. But you can see already you have this nice bit of a glow that's added there. That blends a slight bit better into the sky. I'm going to add another layer and call this direct moon highlights because we're going to be putting these ones directly below the moon layer. And I'm going to go once again to my brushes and then increase the size a bit on this one. Let's say around 1457. And then just make two clicks on either side of this moon here to add a nice glow to it. I don't want those to be too overwhelming on it, but we can drop it down just a slight bit. And once you notice that there's a bit more needed, you can kind of go around and add in a bit of brightness to the areas around the moon. So this is looking pretty great. It blends the moon a bit better to what we want it to be. We can go back down to the moon highlights layer, knowing that there's a bit more blending that we need to do here. Once again with this sky, and just add in a couple more brush strokes to kind of connect up with that highlight layer. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'll reflect this moon in just a second here. We can just drag all these layers. Once again, hit Control, Control J, hit Control T, flip them vertically, and then drag them down below our reflected layer. Once again, just keep an eye on these snaps here. It locks in pretty well and shows you the positioning of where the moon should be in order to get that perfect symmetrical alignment. If it's off here, it doesn't make sense why the moon would be reflected that way. But once you see these pink lines showing up on either side, that's when you know that it's been centered on the above image. So that's looking pretty good. So let me, get, let me hit enter and lock that in. And I'm gonna just go on to solely the moon copy layer. I'm gonna call this moon reflected. I'm gonna go onto that layer, make it once again a smart object. Go to filter and then motion blur once again. And then this one also doesn't need too much, so we'll keep it somewhere in the 30s. And actually, let's just drop its opacity down just a slight bit, because usually in the reflected layer, it gets a bit kind of muted tones. You can also do the same thing with the highlights, dropping them down just a bit more to get that nice muted tone. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but the sky still looks a bit bland. So I'm actually going to add in some stars, which are all available once again on Unsplash, which I can link to in the description of this video. There's a really fantastic uh, starry sky image that I like to use quite a lot for my edits. And it's from Red Angelo. Here's this layer. And the reason I like it, it's got a nice kind of gradient here in the blues. So it goes from a, a kind of a darkish color here, darkish blue, dark black almost. It kind of fades lightly into a nice kind of grayish blue by the time you get down here. So it allows me, if my sky is a bit lighter, I can add in some lighter tones to it. Or if it's darker, in this case it's a bit darker, I can kind of go in between here and add in a bit of the darker stars. So that looks pretty good, so I can hit enter. And I get a lot of questions on how to blend stars or, or skies into my images. And the way I actually do that is just entirely by blending here. So for this one I'm going to hit blend to screen, which you can already see looks pretty nice up here. This is obviously a mess and you need to correct this. but you have it a pretty good look up here. If you're just blending this to the screen in other ways, you can do an overlay too, which makes it a bit too dark, and you can see that doesn't really look that great. You can also do a linear dodge, which looks pretty good as well. But the blend to screen option is usually the one I find myself using most frequently, because it adds a nice muted tone to the image, and you can see how good those stars look. So let me just rasterize this layer and then add a layer mask to it. And what I'm gonna do here is go to the rectangular mar marquee tool and select this bottom part of the frame here, because this is not where I want the stars to be. Grab a large brush, increase the hardness, increase the size of this bar marker, and then just brush all of that away. You're going to be reflecting the stars down here anyway, so those will show up in the future. You can drop down to a lighter brush, a smaller brush with uh, a softer edge, and go through and kind of fine tune your cut a bit here. So you can see the stars are looking pretty great up here, but they kind of don't blend very well with that bottom layer there, so I'm actually going to decrease the opacity just a slight bit to get those stars blending a bit more to my image. And now I'm noticing that there's a couple gaps here where the moon highlights should theoretically be. So let me actually go through here onto my original moon highlights layer and add those in. And now I'm noticing that the stars are a bit more muted. This is all kind of a, a, a balancing act here, so you kind of just increase and see what you need 
to get that image to look well. And it's all based on your judgment. So for me, I think still the moon highlights look a bit too bright down here. So I kind of want to decrease them just a bit more to get a more muted tone over them. So that's looking pretty good. It's blended fairly well. So now I actually need to drop these stars down. Rename that to the stars top layer and duplicate it once again using Control J, Control T, and then flip these stars around. I want them to align just to the top of where that mountain is right there. So that's matched up very well. Hit enter, make this one a smart object, and then just add in our motion blur. So this one we're actually going to need a lot more motion blur similar to that landscape. So you want them to be a bit more blurred. I'm going to increase that blur up to maybe around 85. I notice usually when I'm looking at this that there's something missing in the center of this frame here. That this layer looks a bit too dark with comparison to the surroundings. So what I actually usually do is add in a fog layer. And you can do this a number of ways. You can do this by using brushes like the ones I was just talking about. Or sometimes there's just a great little image that I like to use. It's just a fog PNG layer, which once again I can link to in the description of this video. That usually I'll just drag and drop on top and resize to my liking. And what I want to do is have this just kind of hovering on the water layer here, as if this is just kind of a misty evening out on the, the river or the lake or whatever this is. So I'm going to add this fog layer in here, hit enter, and then I'm going to do a couple changes here to rasterize this and add in a mask. So first I like to usually blend this to the screen, it increases the brightness just a bit, usually in layers where there's that whiter color. And then I'm going to once again grab a large brush here and brush away the top part of this because I don't want this as much on the mountains. I can snap in here a bit and see that this guy is kind of a bit too faded out because of this fog. So usually what I do is drop the opacity of the fog layer down a bit more to blend that a bit better. So I'll drop it down to say around 50 to 60 percent. So let me show you what this did. I'll fit this screen here and kind of do a before and after the fog. So here's before the fog. You can see it's, it's fairly dark in this region here. And then by adding in this fog layer, it kind of brings out some of the brightness, some of the highlights um, of this region, and kind of adds a little bit more intrigue in, uh, to the photo. 